Welcome to Bridge the Gap, a show where we aim to build a bridge of understanding between opposing views. Make It Common have partnered with YouTube Black to bring you a special edition to discuss protecting your black joy. As usual, you'll see participants sit down to discuss some thought-provoking statements. Over the last 18 months, my mental health has been negatively impacted. If they disagree with the statement, they'll leave their seat and allow those that agree to explain themselves. Everyone's putting murals of this man's face and showing the videos of black bodies in the street, which I think is something that needs to be censored. Those that disagree then return and express themselves to the rest of the group, hopefully building a bridge of understanding. There's just layers upon layers upon layers of things that's happened in the past 18 months that have definitely affected me negatively. We also have our councillor Ben on board to provide analysis on our panel's discussions and views. Let's see what happens. My name is Ray and I'm a rapper slash singer and songwriter who goes by the name RAE, which stands for Rising Above Everything. For me, it just can't be just one thing. Mm. So like, yeah, like my family, I'm, I'm black, my family are black, they bring me joy. My friends bring me joy. You guys bring me joy. <laughs> it's been pretty obvious that I don't know we even had different ideas of what joy means. My name is uh, Bashir Aziz. Um, I'm 26. Wow, I'm 27, Lord. 27 from South London. I'm an artist, or all round artist. I dibble dabble. For me, Black Joy is, I really am happy with the fact that how versatile we can be and how versatile we are, literally being black as a whole, and then the, the things that it splits into is just undefeated. I think there's not one definition for Black Joy. We're not a monolith. My name is Yahil Kamara no, no. I am a musician, um, a nice guy. I'd like to think I'm a bit of an activist and yeah. But I do think that for me, that central pillar that anchors all of it is coming as we are. The limitations when we step into a place, when you go to an airport, you step into a shop, those being shed from us. The fact that we have to expect to be treated a certain way, that being shed from it, to be totally free to be not black, if that makes sense, like, to not have that burden or that title of blackness and just be seen as Shani or Abs. And that's who you see in front of me. And let's go back to what you said as well, that when I look at you, I see you, I don't see your blackness first. I think that in itself and feeling that people understand that and do see that, I think that's joy. <laughs> Over the last 18 months, my mental health has been negatively impacted. <clears throat> Like, does that count? That? Like half? Yeah, it's half. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, like, when you have, like, goals in life and you haven't really reached it, or you haven't, I don't know, I'm not, like, hitting the steps that I want you to get to this goal. It's really impacted my mental health. The third, like, lockdown was, like, Come on, mate, like, seriously. <laughs> My name is Remy Bergs. I'm a radio presenter. I'm a MC slash host. I'm also a A&R at O207 Def Jam. You know, all the plans that you had for the year, you had, like, I had to rejig it or I had to find another way to mm -hmm. achieve it. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a bit of a, a Debbie Downer, I would say, on my, on my mental health. And there was just a lot of reflection for myself um, and also for, like, the things that were happening around me. Being black. It was not easy. Mm. Not that it's easy every other day, but I think the fact that we were in our homes and you couldn't run off to work and pigeonhole it and deal with it later. And the fact that what happened to George Floyd, George Floyd, what happened to Breonna Taylor, um, Ahmed Aubrey as well, because it was so magnified and the fact that everyone was sitting at home looking at it and having a very intimate look into your own trauma as well. I think that for me sent me left Guys. Yo. Oh, go on. Long time no see. <laughs> Why don't we agree? What's wrong? Over the last 18 months, a whole lot of has gone on. Um, and I've, I consider myself a very, very strong person mentally. There's just layers upon layers upon layers of things that's happened in the past 18 months that have definitely affected me negatively. But that's not to say that I didn't come back stronger with better mentality about the whole thing. I became mentally strong by reading a lot of books, personal development books, um, realizing 
in this life, you've got one chance and just to grab it like this and to do everything that you enjoy. Ultimately, I wanted to love myself more um, and, sh and respect myself more and, and, and be a stronger thinker. And once I did those things, once I started showing myself more respect, more love, more this, it, it radiated and came back. Hi, my name is Ben. I'm a counsellor and psychotherapist working in Greater Manchester. It's been a really tough 18 months for um, everyone, really, dealing with the pandemic. But for people of colour, it's actually been doubly tough in that there's been a real sort of um, racial sort of awakening around the country. And what we're finding is people are dealing with a double stress. I have seen a therapist slash counsellor before. Yeah, so I've, I invested in a life coach this year properly. My name's Shanice, but everyone calls me Shani. I'm from Birmingham. I work in advertising. I am also a lecturer and I love dance. So I'm also a trained dancer. A life coach I find was better for me and gave me more accountability for what I was like working through and still working through. I always believed in it. I never thought there was like anything wrong with therapy, but it just took me a while to I guess, get into it. Do it, yeah, 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 yeah. I had therapy during the pandemic, mm. um, and it was different uh, like in terms of... All virtual? No, no, it actually wasn't. It was, it was... In person? It was in person. I think for me, I needed to have therapy. I needed to experience it so I can also go forward and, and actually be an advocate for it properly. Yes. At that point, I was, I was saying, yeah, therapy's great, but I hadn't even done it yeah, myself. You hadn't done it yet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I did it, and I feel like I've... I've I'm still doing it, yeah. and I feel like I've learned so much about myself. Okay, so. And I, I literally apply the things that I've like learned about myself to my life right now. I was very lucky for my therapy to be paid for by a charity called the Black LGBT Therapy Fund, which is run by um, Ro Frimpong. And yeah, like so, they funded a couple mm -hmm. sessions. There's therapy like funding out there, but yes. he, but that was. I'm just blessed that that was put in front of me. Yeah, yeah. It's very hard to find. And like, they're kind of like creating a black therapy. There's a black therapy like really? website where you can actually go and find. Yeah, I'm sure there therapies. is. To be honest, I found my life coach on Instagram and it was literally just a repost mm. as somebody recommended people to follow, like, you know, like affirmations and stuff. And I'd found her and just inquired. But actually, I think on Twitter, that's where I see a lot of stuff. And I actually saw that LGBT, I saw that yeah. what Road started. Um, and there's, through different organisations, Liv from Galdem is always sharing stuff. I've, like, I've seen her share a couple of stuff. There are a lot of people that want to be, for, I don't know, for example, I want a black woman as a therapist mm -hmm. so that there's a relatability there. Or I want someone of the LGBTQ community so that I can talk in a safe space, like all them things, because biases do exist, so I think, if you can kind of put out there exactly what you want or even just test it, there, I feel like there's, there's, a real, there's a community. What I would say to anyone who's looking to um, access support is, you know, there are, there are a number of ways you can go. You can go via the NHS, but you're not necessarily, you won't be in, you know, you won't be in control really of who you get as a therapist, um, or you can go private. There are some good, really good charitable organisations where the, uh, cost of the therapy is actually discounted or free even and so it might be worth looking at that um, I can think so private I would certainly suggest the BACP which is the British Association of Counseling and Psychotherapy it's one of the largest of the governing bodies and you can actually do a filtered search for therapists by colour by gender um, uh, sexuality there's also other um, organisations like the uh, counselling directory and there's a, there's a number of others but if you are thinking about getting support, then, you know, don't delay, um, you know, uh, speak to someone as soon as you can and, and, and get that support that you need. Thank you. Sorry, 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 sorry. I find um, therapy in other forms. Um, I find a lot of things therapeutic, so I see that's therapy, you know? My name's Papi Abs, one out of six of Area Boys, NSG, the Wavers Collective in the world. Music, writing down my thoughts. Um, it's the, my notes is full of amazing words. I'm luckily I'm blessed to, to be in a group, so it's like I'm able to speak to these people, and they relate as well because we're going for like no shows and whatnot. We're experiencing it together. The workplace puts restrictions on my blackness. If 
Right. So generally, obviously, it's no secret where you have to work three times, four times. It's hard to achieve this and this. Um, even from applications, from what your name looks like to this. Um, if you, your, your name looks anything ethnic and they're not about it, mm -hmm. gone. Um, I don't know, you could work the same hours, same sh s role as someone uh, who's not black and they often get the promotion or they often get further than you, or, you know, it's just like more hard working. Uh, that's what I've experienced. I feel like that's always going to be the trap unless you do your own thing. I feel like YouTube is a space in itself where it allows you to be you. Um, and obviously, with my, I put a lot of music on, on YouTube, a lot of just lifestyle stuff. There's platforms on YouTube like the GRMs, the... The, the link up TVs, all these platforms that just share similar music to what I'm doing, the Afro vibes or whatever. Yeah, YouTube's just a space that, you know, allows you to just be yourself, I guess. Yeah, for me as well, like YouTube, like, when I upload my videos, I'm, up, I'm allowing people to enter the world of RAE because my world is very 90s and I don't have any limitations, like, with my stuff. And it, I love, I love it because it connects me to people around the world. And also, like, there might not be platforms on YouTube for me, but my channel is my platform, and I use it to exp just express yeah, yeah, yeah. my music. Yeah. Black spaces are key to experiencing black joy. It's amazing when I see people <laughs> like me, man, in certain environments. Like these days, yeah, I go to um, like it was that like wireless um, recently. And backstage was just full of bare people, like, you know what I mean? It's like, yo, brothers. the brothers, <laughs> the sisters, you know what I mean? I'm like, this is, and I just felt like, cause my, we've done wireless a few times and I'll take it back to our very first time. So I saw the, you know, the Post Malone's, the, it was lit. But now this time it was like, there's more people, you know, my brothers, my sisters there and it just felt even better. I feel like a great example is like stepping off the plane in Africa Yeesh. and you just think, I'm home. Oh, <laughs> like, nothing feels like out of place. Yeah. yeah. Nothing feels like, even the heat that's banging oh. your chest, you're just thinking, yeah. I, I, thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're thinking, you know, and you're walking through the airport and you're just seeing black, black like, and you're just thinking, wow, mm. like, we exist and we exist loudly and we exist mm. in numbers. Mm. And, you know, like, yeah. we're in a country where we're, we're a minority, do you know mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we exist in numbers. And, yeah. Like, it's beautiful. It was really uh, interesting watching the uh, video and some of the creatives uh, talking about some of their experiences. And what I would just say um, uh, above all is it kind of mirrors uh, a lot of the support that I've been providing to people of colour over the last year and a half, two years. The thing I think that is really important about mental health, uh, well-being and such like is connection and communication. Okay, so, you know, talk to your friends, family, talk to a therapist like myself, and just, if you feel that you need that help, make sure that you're talking, because it's in, it's through community that we, we, we get our strength. And that's, um, that's what I've really found, certainly with the research and with the work that I've been doing. So, above all, look after each other and make sure that you're doing that connecting. <laughs>